Good Thursday afternoon. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandagis. Before we get into today's topics, make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button. And if you like what you see, hit that like button as well and share with your friends. We got a lot to talk about today in terms of the tropics, not only in the Atlantic Basin, but also in the Pacific with a major hurricane now, Douglas, that may threaten the Hawaiian Islands by this weekend. Let's look at the tropical Atlantic Basin first. Overall, it is starting to get more active. We have Tropical depression number eight, Gonzalo down to the south, but overall most of the central Atlantic is very hostile with a Saharan air layer. A lot of dust, dry air just to the north of where Gonzalo is. Here's a close-up imagery of Tropical Storm Gonzalo. As of the 2 o'clock advisory from the Hurricane Center, 60 mile per hour winds. So since the last time we spoke, it is a little bit stronger. But this is a 12 hour loop of the infrared satellite imagery. We talked a little bit about this in yesterday's video. We look at this to get the cloud top temperatures. Why that matters is the colder the cloud tops are, the stronger the convection or thunderstorm activity is. And that gives us an indication that the storm is stronger overall. When you look at this as a loop for 12 hours, you can see at the most recent image it is struggling big time we had some good convection last night and then this morning it started to really kind of wither away so what happened well remember yesterday we were talking about the dry air the Saharan air layer that was lurking to the north this is the uh, water vapor satellite imagery here and what this does shows us dry air and moist air the dry air depicted by the oranges and yellows the moist air the blues the greens and the whites Plenty of dry hair here to the north and off to the west of the system. And a closer look at it is that some of that dry air was actually pulled into the circulation and is starting to choke it off a little bit. I also mentioned how such a small system was doing a great job of insulating itself and keeping the dry air out of its overall circulation. But that doesn't have to last forever. And as we saw here in the last 12 hours, it in fact did get influenced by that dry air as it's pushing off towards the west. Will this continue to be a trend? It could be. But again, with small systems, they can intensify rapidly, but they can also deteriorate quickly. So we'll see what happens here as it tracks off towards the west. A look at visible satellite imagery. Uh, yeah, it still overall looks decent. You can see that rotation, that circulation there happening, but the convection really taking a hit at the current time. The updated storm track from the Hurricane Center at 2 o'clock. They still expect this to strengthen to become a Category 1 hurricane as it heads towards the Windward Islands. And at that time, it's going to be around Saturday evening with winds up to around 80 miles per hour. So you need 74 mile per hour winds or greater to be a category one. With that on approach, watches have already been issued, and this is for Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. Let's refresh ourselves on what watches and warnings mean as we go forward into the season. We're going to see a lot more of these, most likely. A watch is not imminent. A watch comes before a warning. So a watch means that tropical storm or hurricane conditions are possible within 48 hours. As the timeline gets shorter, within 36 hours, that watch will be upgraded to a warning. Now, out ahead of this system, as it tracks off towards the west, it is a very low rider, low latitudes here. In fact, it's located south of 10 degrees right now, extremely far to the south. But it's going to gain latitude slowly, and it's going to be running into very warm ocean waters. That's not an issue. There's plenty of fuel here. It's the dry air that we're going to continue to watch and see if it gets entrained into the system further and, in fact, leads to further deterioration. Now let's jump over to tropical depression number eight. Yesterday we had talked about this as Invest 91L. It has been upgraded to a tropical depression. And you can see from the loop of infrared satellite imagery here, again, the cold cloud tops indicating stronger thunderstorms. It has really started to look a little bit more organized than it did just yesterday. And this is just crawling off to the west northwest, eventually towards the Texas coastline. Hurricane Hunter aircraft flew a mission into it this morning and they found winds getting close to tropical storm force, 39 miles per hour or greater. And you can see they clocked the wind speed there of 39 miles an hour, but still as of this video, still a depression with 35 mile per hour winds, gusts up to around 45 or so. And you can see the track outline of the Hurricane Hunter aircraft that flew through it. So they flew a WC-130J aircraft. This is the U.S. Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunters, the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron, flying out of Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi, flying into these storms there. And what they do is they fly through it. They sample the low level and flight level observations and they deploy GPS drop zones, and that gives us a reading of wind and pressure through different levels of the atmosphere or from where they're flying. So that 
tells us right there that they are investigating it further and they're going to be flying several more missions out into it in the near future. Water vapor imagery on this again. Again, dry air is the yellow, moist air, greens and blues. Notice there's a lot more moist air here than what we saw surrounding Gonzalo. So even though mid-levels may be on the drier side, I don't think that's going to do much to stop it from developing. Visible satellite imagery as well. Still a very broad rotation, very large system encompassing a large portion of the Gulf of Mexico. Its forward movement here is only at seven miles per hour. So that is going to allow for it to take advantage of of the extremely warm ocean waters there that we're going to talk about in a second. Here's the updated forecast track from the Hurricane Center at 2 o'clock. It does expect it to strengthen into a tropical storm by as early as tomorrow morning at the 8 a.m. advisory and potentially making landfall around Corpus Christi, Texas by Saturday morning with peak winds, at least with this forecast at around 50 miles per hour. Now keep in mind, it's still a little bit too early to forecast any sort of storm surge or anything like that, but you're gonna look for the worst of the storm surge potentially to happen on the right side of the storm where there's continuous onshore flow. So anywhere where located north of where the storm actually makes landfall, we'll watch there. Tropical storm watches are posted all along the Texas coastline just to the north of Brownsville and right out through Houston. Remember that watch is for conditions possible, tropical storm or hurricane conditions within 48 hours. So it's going to take its time getting there. So there is a record on the table here. Remember it said it's supposed to forecast, it's forecasted to strengthen into a tropical storm, gain a name. That name would be started with the letter H. Well, the earliest occurrence of an H named storm was taken by Harvey, not the Harvey we know in 2017, the previous occurrence of it in 2005, August 3rd. So Hannah is forecast to develop in the Gulf within the next few days, and that would mean it would be the earliest H name on record here. And that would join the list of C, E, F, and G so far this season that have been the earliest occurrences of those lettered names as well. So 2020 has just been a lot of records so far. Let's look out and see what kind of impacts we could see potentially from Hannah making landfall in Texas. Likely this is going to be a widespread rain event because it's so slow moving. It's a tropical system, moisture laden. We could be talking anywhere from two to four to three to six inches of rainfall. This is one computer model. We're looking at the GFS here, so keep that in mind. Now let's talk about sea surface temperatures. Where it's located right now, pretty much smack dab in the center of the Gulf of Mexico. Water temperatures are extremely warm. They're running to a degree, a degree and a half to almost two degrees above average for this time of the year. We need 80 degree water temperature or more to facilitate tropical development and growth. We certainly have that here. What we're looking at is the skin temperature of the ocean, right? What the sea surface temperature is. But what's also interesting about this particular part of the Gulf of Mexico is that that heat energy extends to a depth, meaning that with the slow movement of this storm, it's going to be churning up the water, something we call upwelling. And typically that would lead to some cooler waters rising to the surface and depleting the fuel. But when you have the heat, the hot water, the warm water, it's extending all the way to a depth when it's upwelling it, it's just replacing warm water with more warm water. So this could be an overachiever, I think, over the next couple of days. We'll have to watch that one closely with what would become Hannah. Now let's jump over to the Pacific because big developments here with Hurricane Douglas. Last time we spoke, Douglas just became a hurricane, a low level category one hurricane with winds of 75 miles an hour. Today, it has jumped two categories to become a major hurricane category three, 120 mile per hour winds, a defined eye, smack dab right in the middle of a category three. That means rapid intensification has occurred. Now, what does that mean? We've seen this thrown out multiple times in the past couple of seasons. Rapid intensification, according to the National Hurricane Center, is when you see an increase in the maximum sustained winds of around 30 knots, 35 miles an hour in 24 hours. And as we go back to this, the winds went from 75 yesterday to 120 today, 45 mile per hour uh, wind jump. So certainly that has occurred there with rapid intensification with Douglas. Where is it going? Well, it's expected to remain a major hurricane over the next 24 hours or so. And then as it gains latitude and heads towards the Hawaiian Islands, it will start to encounter some cooler sea surface temperatures. And that's good because if this is going to impact Hawaii, we want it to weaken significantly. Here's a look at sea surface temperatures on the forecast track, dropping below that criteria of 80 degrees Fahrenheit into the mid to upper 70s. So hopefully this does uh, some good and knocks the intensity down 
as it heads towards Hawaii. And that time frame would be around Saturday night in early Sunday morning. So we'll watch it all very, very carefully. That's the latest. I know it was a lot again, but if you like this video, click the like button. You can find me on other social media forums on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. We'll see you tomorrow.